Where are you going, Ben? Out to the desert. Well, you was out to the desert yesterday. I want to see what the vultures are doing. <laughs> you and them buzzards. Uh, I just think there's a lot more to vultures than people give them credit for. Well, maybe so, Ben. Maybe so. But who cares? No better scaring my vultures away like that. Yeah, well, I'm sorry, Ben, but this is important. Now, where's Winnie Haas? Have you seen him? No, I, I haven't seen him for a couple of weeks. Well, he signed on as Mr. Maddox's guide here. It was all set. Now he's nowhere around. Ben, how would you like the job? Ben, this is Mr. Horton Maddox. Hello, Ben. Hello. I've got a permit to shoot Bighorn. Blisters on my fingers from all the strings I had to pull to get it. And now it seems there's no one to guide me. Maybe Winnie went up to Lone Pine or something. Les here tells me that you probably know more about this part of the country than anyone else, except for the old man. I'm not interested in hunting. Sixty dollars a day. Hey, that's double, Ben. We're only talking about three or four days, Ben. And if you can help me get a ram with a good big rack on it, there's a $200 bonus in it for you. Why so much? It's important to me. When do you want to get started? What's the matter with right now? You got your gear and I got mine. You must have been pretty sure I'd say yes. That's my business, Ben, making people say yes. Hey, Ben, what do you say? We transfer some of this gear. Hey, Les, you didn't tell me about him. And I'm crippled? Don't worry, Ben. I can keep up. I'll do the honors tomorrow night. Should have made more miles. A lot of light left. Not for long. The sun drops like a rock in here. Mm. Mr. Manning, I'm sorry about what I said earlier. About my leg? 
I'm used to it. It's just that it takes a lot for a man like you to come in here and do what you're doing. I think handicapped people have an advantage. Most people are lazy at heart. A handicapped person can't afford to be lazy. I learned years ago the only thing I had going for me was my mind. So I trained it just like an athlete trains his body. I studied law. There are many things you can study that'll help you think with another man. But the law teaches you to outthink the other man. Then you can go on and do anything you want to. A man who can think on his feet, keep his head under pressure, not let his emotions interfere with his reason. There's nothing in the world that man can't do. <laughs> You're all right, then. Want a cigar? Sure. Why not? Hey, Ben. Study law. trying to get up here. The Department of the Interior protects these big horn like they're holy relics. I've had my name on the list for six years. Six years. Take a look over there. Where? There, up ahead. Look at that. That old ram on the right. Got a head on him like the front of a train. I'll take your word for it. We're too far away for them to worry about us yet. They never heard of a 30 out 6 Magnum. Take it easy. Take it easy. Don't startle them. This is good. This is good. I got a shot. Ah! Something spooked them. Maybe we can catch up. Hold it. We'll take the Jeep. Then we can pick up their trail on foot. Wait a minute. There's one of them still up there. Where? Big white rock. Right there. I doubt it. These sheep always move in a group. He's there. I saw horns. Mr. Maddox, they... Got him. Yeah, I still didn't see anything. He's up there. You mean saw horns? Yeah, the first time. Well, the first time? What about the second time? Just a flash, Ben. You mean you shot at a flash? I was over-anxious, Ben. Just a little over-anxious. Well, what if it's a female? The only reason a female's gonna stay behind is if there's a young one to protect. Take it easy, Ben. Nobody ever went to jail for shooting a female sheep. I tell you what, Ben. You stay here. I'll go up. Maybe it's nothing. If it's a ram, I'll call you. You can help me bring him down.
can't tell you how sorry I am. It was a you, just a young one, poor little thing. What can I say? I was overeager. I thought he might be my only shot. You'd think I'd know better, wouldn't you? You just don't shoot at anything that moves. I know. I know. Next time I'll listen to my guide to whom I'm paying an exorbitant sum of money. Well, I've buried her, so I... I guess there's nothing more we can do. Winnie Haas. I can't tell you how sorry I am. I know he doesn't look like much. But there was a lot of decency in Winnie. Sometimes he'd get to drinking and come out here, prospecting. Always looking for that piece of pie in the mountain, he'd say. He was always good to me, though. Taught me everything he knew. Everybody thought he was crazy. But he wasn't. He just lived the way he wanted to. In a way, he died the way he should have. Winnie never liked to plan anything. Ben. I'm doubly sorry now that I know he was someone meaningful to you. Well, we better take him back to town. Are you going to give me a hand? We could use my cart as a litter. Take him down that way. Yeah. I wonder if you'd mind if I just sit a while. I'm kind of shook. What are you shooting at? Rattlesnake. Done rest and we should get started. I feel fine now. What did you do that for? So you'd listen to me. You used my gun. That's right. I'm listening to you. Good. Ben? I feel we've been going about this thing all wrong. From now on, I'm going to listen much more carefully to what you have to say. What do you mean? Well, I feel we should bury the body like you originally suggested. I didn't say that. You didn't? Still a good idea. You mean you just want to bury him here and forget the whole thing? For your sake as well as mine. There's a slug in the old man from your gun now. It's just your word against mine as to who killed him. Why would I kill Winnie? He was my friend. What reason would I have? I didn't know him at all. Now, Ben, I'll give you my personal check for $5,000. You'll give me your word. You'll forget about this. Place. I know I can rely on your word. 
I don't want your money. All I want to do is report an accident. It's an accident I can't afford, Ben. I've gotten pretty high in life. And the higher you get, the less you're forgiven. There's always somebody ready to bring you down. I'm afraid we're just gonna have to go about this my way. Now, fortunately, the sand's pretty loose. You shouldn't be digging too long. I could trust you, I'd be glad to help. you leave your shirt off. I've had it off long enough and I'm already beginning to burn. I'm gonna have to be firm about this. I don't want you putting that shirt on again. I've made my decision. I want you to remove your hat, your boots and your socks. You can keep your pants. What the hell are you saying? It's part of my business to be a measure of men. In my opinion, you have every intention of reporting this accident. I know how you feel, Ben, and I respect your integrity. At the same time, I will not let some chance accident destroy everything I've built all these years. Now. Now you're on your own. How far is it to the highway? 40 or 50 miles? I leave it to you to make it any way you can. Without any clothes or water in this heat. That's right. When they find me dead, what are they going to believe? We're supposed to have been together. We were hunting. We became separated. Not being familiar with the desert, I panicked and drove around aimlessly looking for you. You were looking for me. Unfortunately, I was in possession of all our supplies. By the time I found you, you were already dead from exposure and dehydration. Apparently, you went crazy in the heat and tore off all your clothes. Happens all the time in the desert. You think they'll believe that? Making people believe is part of my job. I'm very good at it. I know this desert. You don't. I'll make it. You got a point there. Maybe I should shoot you now. Nope. I want you to die somewhere between here and the highway. You will, too. You know why? I'll make it. That's why. You'll die trying. You're crazy. I've often been called that by those I've defeated.
Advantage here. Like hell, Maddock. See you, Ben. Count on it. Go to sleep, Ben. I guess that's everything.
advantage here? Like hell! You said that before. Never got rid of anything.
exercise, man. Got to keep in shape.
I know you're up there, Ben. As you say, Ben, sun drops like a rock out here. Be in the morning. In the morning.
cold weather. Sunny and hot today and tomorrow. Highs today, 94 to 99 in upper deserts, and 97 to a blistering 109 in lower deserts. Little temperature change expected for the remainder of the week. Light variable winds in morning hours becoming westerly 8 to 16 knots by afternoon. Now we'll hear some music from the Four Feathers and then back to the news. That'll teach you to think along with another man, but the law teaches you to outthink the other man. Thank <laughs> you. 
advantage here. Stop right here and bury the old man. It'd be worth ten thousand dollars to me. Can you hear me, Ben? You never quit, do you? You're not thinking, Ben. I'm a lawyer. I have influence and I have money. You have any idea what they'll do to you for killing that old man and mutilating the only witness? A cripple? You're no more crippled than I am. Matic shot him. It was an accident. We'd spotted some bighorn, and Matic thought he was shooting at a sheep. All right, then what? He didn't want me to report it. He was afraid of a scandal. And when I wouldn't go along with him, he tried to kill me. Well, no, no, wait a minute. Let me see if I can get this straight. Uh, you say that uh, Mr. Maddock here didn't want you to report the accident, so he tried to kill you? That's right. He made me strip down to my pants. And then he told me to make it to the highway the best way I could. And that's how you got all cut up like that, huh? He trailed me the whole time. And every time I found some water, he'd shoot at me. No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. So far, you got Mr. Maddox doing all the shooting, but he's the one who got all the holes in him. They're buckshot wounds. I shot him with a slingshot. A slingshot? Yes. It was Winnie's. I found it in his camp. It's in the back of the Jeep if you want to see it. Uh, Dickie, go out and get it, will you? All right, so Mr. Maddock is doing the shooting. Yes, sir, up on Big Lizard Butte. And he's missing you with a rifle, but you're hitting him with a slingshot? I came down at night, and I'd hid until he'd gone to the Butte in the morning. Where'd you hide? I buried myself in the sand. Buried? I knew if he thought I was on the Butte, he'd climb it after me. And I might have a chance to get the Jeep or my rifle. But like always, he had taken care of everything. He had taken the key out of the Jeep and the bolt out of my rifle. But I had the slingshot. So I set fire to his tent so that Maddox would see it and come down. And when he got close enough, I stepped out and shot him before he could fire the magnet. That's all. All right. Mr. Maddox? Well, that's truly an amazing story. There's nothing like a slingshot out there that I can see. It's there. I know it's there. Are you sure you looked all around? I tore that Jeep apart. It was under the blanket with Winnie's body. They must have taken it to the mortuary. Check that out, will you, Dickie? Now, what about this slingshot, Mr. Maddock? 
There was no slingshot that I ever saw. Ben shot me with a 22, just like he did the old man. Bert, he's lying. Will you just please calm down? What did you use in the slingshot for ammunition? Double lock buckshot. How about that, Doc? Can you tell me what made these wounds? Was it a 22 slug or a double lock buckshot? Wounds would be about the same. Went right through his hand. I'd have to see the slug, Bert. All right. Let's hear your version, Mr. Matter. Well, as Ben said, we sighted or heard a bighorn. But something frightened them off before we could get within firing range. Turned out to be the old man. He was in his camp, drunk as a lord, laughing, crying, singing, just generally carrying on. And Ben remonstrated with him with perfect justification, I might add. Mm -hmm. Go on. The old man became abusive, violent. Ben lost his temper. He grabbed my magnum, 30-06, and began to blow the camp apart. The water can, the coffee pot, everything. Bert! Ben, will you just soak your feet and let me conduct the interrogation? Do you mind? Go ahead, Mr. Maddock. Well, I, I thought that would be the end of it. And we continued to look for Bighorn. Apparently, it preyed on Ben's mind. You see, I'd, I'd offered him a $200 bonus for a, a good kill. He blamed the old man for cheating him out of it. But now, Winnie Haas was still alive at this time, as far as you know. Oh, very much so. Very much so. We were camped out by Big Lizard Butte. And after lunch, we were lounging around. I remember Ben had his shirt off. We got talking about how the old man had cost us our shot and how it could possibly be our, our only shot. Ben got very excited. Said he was going back to Winnie's camp. It must have been about, uh, about 3 o'clock. I heard shots from the east, from the mountain where Ben had gone. And you think this was a shot that killed Winnie Haas, huh? Ben came back to camp about sundown. He looked very much as he does now. I questioned him about it. He said that when he got back to Winnie's camp, the old man was wilder and drunker than ever. Said there'd been a fight. Ben said that he had shot him and buried him. Bert, for God's sakes, I just can't sit here. Ben. I told him he'd never get away with it. I urged him to go back to the grave site with me in the morning. We'd dig up the body and come to town. I told him I'd do everything in my power to help him. I'm a lawyer, you know. Well, finally he agreed. We drove over in the morning. But after I helped him exhume the body, he took my Magnum 30-06, went back a few paces, and fired it into Winnie's chest. Thought he might use the crazy honey accident story. I tried to get away, but as you know, I have a bum leg. I wasn't fast enough. He kept firing at me with the 22, until finally I was too wounded to go any further. Bert, can't you see? He's taken my story and just turned it around. Bert? Did you find the slingshot? We looked all around. We couldn't find any slingshot. It's out there! It's got to be out there! Ben, if it's there, we'll find it. All right, that's about it. I'll uh, go out in the helicopter with Les and see what we can find. I'd like for the two of you to be in my office tomorrow afternoon, say, 1 o'clock. You both will be there, won't you? Slingshot has got to be somewhere in the gas station. We turned that place upside down. There is no place else he could have gotten rid of it. He must have done it when I passed out. If you say so, Ben. You do believe me, don't you? It ain't a question of my not believing you. I've lived with you since I was ten years old. Do you think I could kill Winnie Haas? Look, if I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times to stay away from that crazy old drunk. He'd cause you nothing but trouble. Now, look what happened. 
If it hadn't have been for the things Winnie taught me about survival, I'd be dead by now. Only if I could find that slingshot, maybe somebody would believe me. Look, boy, when I found you, you was half dead. You was burned almost plumb through. Now, when that happens to people, they do crazy things. I ain't blaming you. I didn't do anything crazy except stay alive. I didn't kill Winnie. And I didn't dream up that slingshot. I sure hope you find it. Because it's going to be your word against Matt. I know. Sure as hell know that. The uh, wind was kicking up pretty good out there. There was no chance of finding any tracks or anything. But we did find a few things. I think we, we got a little clearer picture now. I'm sorry I'm late. I, I didn't rest too well last night. Oh, that's all right. Uh, we were just getting started anyway. Oh. Dick, did you find the slingshot? I'm sorry. I really looked hard for it, Ben. I went all the way to the butte. Bert, he hit it. I know he did. Ben, I want you to stop it now. Will you, will you just, just sit down there, will you please? All right, now, Ben, you say that Mr. Maddock here shot Winnie by accident thinking he was a bighorn. Well, that would mean that the shot had to be fired from down on the desert floor someplace. Yes. He was behind a rock, about 300 yards away. And, Mr. Maddock, you say that, that Ben here shot Winnie up on the ridge with your gun after you took the body out of the grave. Is that right? That's right. Unless you, you've got the casings. Mr. Maddock, would you say that this uh, casing came from your rifle? Looks right. Les, did you, uh, did you find this down on the desert floor behind a rock? No, I found it up on the ridge, uh, not too far from the grave. Maddock put it there. That's right, I remember. He put it in his pocket after he'd fired it. Why would he do that, Ben? I don't know. That's the way he is. Everything clean and neat. No loose ends. What about the 22 casing? Find it up there, too? Yes, he found it. Because that's where you put the hole in Winnie's head. Well, we can run tests and find out if that came from your 22. Bert, I never fired that rifle. Every shot that came out of it was fired by Maddox. When we went out to uh, Winnie's camp. We found it uh, pretty much of a mess, just like you said, Mr. Maddox. Sure it was, but I never messed it up. He did. Now, why would Mr. Maddox go out there and tear Winnie's camp up like that, Ben? Bert, I told you, to keep me from getting water. That's why he put the hole in the water can. He destroyed everything I could use, except the slingshot. Excuse me. If I'm as wily an adversary as Ben says I am, why would I leave behind something as potentially dangerous as a slingshot? Why wouldn't I destroy that, too? Because you didn't see it. It was wrapped in some brown paper with some other things. Brown paper? We didn't find anything like that up there. It must have blown away. The slingshot was in it, and, and there were some band-aids, and... Well, these two pictures. Here. Those two pictures from Ben's pocket don't do anything to prove that they were wrapped in brown paper that was once owned by Winnie Haas. I know about circumstantial evidence. I'm sorry. Force of habit. You say that when Ben went back to Winnie's camp that uh, he went without his shirt. Now, anybody that's been on the desert knows better than that. Les, tell Sheriff Hamilton the story you told me when you were pitching Ben to me as God. Seems that uh, Ben's known around town to be a little eccentric, a person who prefers animals to people. But you tell the sheriff the story, Les. Go ahead, Les. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I was on patrol in the chopper, and... Uh, I saw this guy lying stark naked on his belly out near Dry Creek Flats. And when I went down to see if he was okay, the guy gets up, waves me away, mad as a hornet, and, uh, well, it was, was Ben. What does that prove? I was trying an experiment. I was trying to see how the vultures would react to me. That's what I'm doing now, experimenting with the vultures.
You remember the time I wrote the article about the gopher snake, don't you? Well, I'm doing the same thing with the vultures. That's all. I think the thing that's becoming evident in these proceedings is that we're dealing with a young man who is emotionally unstable. I have already explained what I'm trying to do. Just listen to his story. Only a confused mind could concoct a tale like that. Just because someone's a little different, that doesn't mean he's guilty. Well, we all know that Ben's a little strange, and his story's certainly strange. But there's just one thing I don't understand. Why in the name of common sense would a man, whether he's strange or not, walk around in the desert with his boots off? I wondered about that, too. But we have to understand that we're dealing with a, a very bright, disturbed, even cunning mind here. And I propose that Ben put himself through all this to corroborate his own story that I made him do it. It's a possibility. Of course, we'll have an inquest in the trial. Bert, it's a lie. His whole story is a lie. I didn't do any of it. Ben, you go down and stay with your uncle. Don't go wandering off. I'll have to arrest you. Well, I've got to catch a plane to New York. I wonder, could someone give me a ride to the airport at Larrabee? Well, we'd be very happy to take you. Uh, Mr. Maddock, you will leave your address. We'll need it for the trial. Oh, of course. He's lying, Bert. I swear to God, he's lying. Well, what do you think they'll do to me? Oh, I don't know, Ben. I you still get a chance at the trial. No more in a snowball in hell. What are we stopping for? Got to fill up. Why here? The only one around. Fill it up, George. Sure thing. You got a cold beer in there? Oh, like ice. Want a beer? No, thank you. Fill her up, will you, Ben? I'm going to get the beer. trophy. We filled that tank yesterday. There's something in here.
And the slingshot was clogging up the gas line. He must have done it when I passed out, just like I said. Probably got the slingshot in town and put it in there himself. Now, that ain't very likely, is it, Mr. Maddock? I mean, if Ben was going to lie about it, he'd have brought this slingshot down to my office this morning. I think you'd better postpone your trip to New York for a couple of days. In fact, I think you'd better get yourself a lawyer. I am a lawyer. Ben, I'm, I'm sorry about this. I, I'm very sorry. So am I. All I ever wanted to do was report an accident. <laughs> 